All right, hey there everyone, Dr. Beth Westy here. Tonight I wanna to talk about improving sleep. Rest and sleep are really, really important for metabolism, stress reduction, hormone balancing, all of these really, really, really important things for your body and your health and your hormones and everything. And a lot of times we can get stuck in a rut of, oh my gosh, I am sleeping terribly. And of course, the easy thing is to say, go to bed earlier. <laughs> you're not sleeping well? Oh, just go to bed earlier. Hmm. When sometimes you're in bed and you're like, oh, I'm either antsy or you have so much to do before bed that you actually rev your system up instead of helping it wind down and calm down. Um, this is really closely tied to stress and how our bodies process stress, handle stress, that's a different video. I want to focus on some real important tips and tricks to get your system to wind down, calm down, to get to sleep, and to have you understand that some of this is not just, oh, I didn't get in bed early enough. <laughs> some of it actually is, oh, your hormonal situation is impacting your sleep in a real way, in a very real way. Hi, Spot. Are you, I know, you want to show me this. He's here. He's I know, I know, come on, do you want to show everybody your gross, gross toy? Can I, do you want, oh, 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 this is lovely. This is what, he's so excited about it. He's like pointing right now, he's got his little paw. I know, how about you just take it? Bubby, can you get spotter? Okay, all right, I'm gonna, there we go. Right? This is real life, right? This is, <laughs> this is very professional. My dog interrupts me. It's fine. It's fine. Okay. Sleep interruptions. Um, you, you need to improve your sleep to help your system recover. I have had women that do my 12 week program that do the 12 week challenge and we focus on improving sleep and they immediately start seeing and feeling results. It changes like that. And it's because like very quickly, you know, I want to say within, you know, days, like a couple of weeks, right? That they notice, oh my gosh, I'm seeing this result. I've got more energy. I'm feeling better. I'm, you know, losing inches. What the heck? Yeah, it's just the sleep. The sleep is better. So when we look at improving your sleep, realize that it's not just about getting to bed earlier. It's not just, oh, maybe you just need to lay down and be tired. <laughs> it would be so easy, right? Like, oh, I'm tired. I'm going to go to bed now. Yay. No, no, there's hormonal differences in it that actually can throw off your sleep patterns too. So once you're aware of this, you can actually build your sleep routine differently. That's what I want you to get to come away with this is, oh my gosh, I'm just not paying attention to when my body may not only need more rest, need different rest, but need a different routine to get the best sleep possible. So when we're looking at sleep, you know, the female cycle days one through 28, Days one through 14, your body is higher in estrogen here. That's easier to sleep then. It's easier to rest. It's easier to recover. But when your system is higher in progesterone, that's what the P is, progesterone, um, that's days about 15 through 28. And again, if your cycle is a little longer or shorter than that, you know, that's okay. Split the difference there. But we're looking at this phase here. You can actually have a harder time getting to sleep and staying asleep. That's a very, very real thing. Even though your body actually needs extra rest, even though your body needs a lot of different things here at this point in your cycle, it can be harder, way harder to get to sleep and stay asleep in the progesterone phase. So plan extra time for yourself. Plan extra um, you know, nutrients at night if you need them to help your body really wind down. And know that you might need to spend extra time meditating, extra time getting your system to respond differently to what you're typically doing. Um, that's very normal. Again, it's not that you're doing it wrong. It's just, hey, your body needs something a little bit different at that point. Other things that are really important to understand is that when your body goes through menopause or you're in or past menopause, that changes your sleep a lot too. It changes it a ton. Estrogen is actually very helpful for women to get sleep. So when that estrogen level drops, nope. You're not getting that same sleep that you were before. So again, it's not that you, you know, all of a sudden sleep is just terrible for you. You're going to need different support. You're going to need different tools. You're going to need different nutrition, different supplements sometimes. Um, and we'll talk about some of those things there. But just remember, you'll need something different when your body goes through menopause because of the lack of estrogen there. It, lack of. It, it's a lower amount. 
Same thing with pregnancy. Yeah. Again, when you're pregnant, your body is high in progesterone. It's progestation, right? Your body's preparing for this pregnancy. And then when you're in pregnancy, you have all these different crazy hormones going on and women get exhausted in pregnancy. And you would think that, oh, of course, I'm going to sleep wonderfully because I'm pregnant. My body's making a human. So of course, I'm just going to sleep a ton. Nope. Big fat nope. Big fat nope. Nope that shift and change in hormone can actually cause insomnia. So menopause can cause insomnia things and pregnancy can cause insomnia. Pregnancy insomnia is a real thing. I actually had that with all three of my babies. It was awful because I would be tired, fall asleep, and I would bing, wake up in the middle of the night. The littlest thing would wake me up and then I'd be up and my system would just respond really fast. Like all of a sudden you can just feel your body get revved up and you're like, dang it, no, calm down. Just Ugh, no, don't, don't wake up. Don't wake up. And I'd just be up and I would have to stay up for like an hour and a half to calm down again, to try and fall asleep. And then when I had to wake up in the morning, I would be so exhausted because my sleep was disrupted. I wouldn't get my deep REM sleep at the right times. It was awful. Yeah. <laughs> so fun. So pregnancy insomnia, Whew, absolutely a thing. Um, one more thing I want to add on to the menopause issue and the menopause sleep issue is that not only can it be just because of the shift in hormone that you have, but also recognize that hot flashes is another reason that your body gets up. If you have a hot flash in the middle of the night, one of the super fun things that accompanies a hot flash is an adrenaline rush. Yay. <laughs> that means that you're not only going to get this wave of hormone and the sweating and everything, but then your body actually has this wave of adrenaline. <sighs> Why? Why would your body do that? Oh, because it's trying to process through all that hormone. But that wave of adrenaline is why you cannot, why you get woken up really fast and cannot get back to sleep right away. It's going to take time. So there's different tools and tricks that again, we'll talk about right now that you can implement to help your system. Goal is, is that you find healthy ways um, I work with a lot of women all over the world, all over the world. And there are, you know, women who sometimes you know, they're like, I can't sleep. And the only way I can get back to sleep is if I start drinking wine at 2am. But then I feel like crap when I try and wake up at five. Yeah. Yeah. So here are some other things to look at and try and see if we can, you know, and, and get into. So meditation and breathing. Meditation is just calming your nervous system down, calming your thoughts down. That can be one of those things that's really, really tough and it's a practice. Note that your meditation may feel different here versus here. That's very normal. How your body and system and brain really works is a little bit different. So recognize that you might have to give yourself more time, give yourself extra tools for meditation. Um, you know, find other ways to kind of wind down at different points if you find it's harder to. Breathing, um, doing different counted breathing types. Um, I use my watch now and I'll talk about this stuff more, but you can also use um, an app that just times it. Breathe in for five, breathe out for five. Super simple. Breathe in for five, breathe out for five, and just keep doing that. Do that for five minutes. In for five, out for five. It's not breathing heavy, not breathing hard but it's just simply getting your system to calm down and stay calm and relaxed. That helps a ton get things going. Um, in terms, you know, of course, other things when you're looking at sleep routine, you no know, screens before bed for an hour, dark room, you want as dark as possible. You also don't want lighting to be, um, uh, you, want, you want like real light bulbs. You don't want fluorescent light bulbs. You don't want that, that type of blue light at all in your room or in your house, especially getting ready for bed because that will impact your brain. And um, so again, real, like the round little light bulbs, those are the best bulbs to have, but have everything as dim as possible for at least an hour before bed. That can help a ton. Um, what Essential oils, candles, right? Soft music, relaxing things like that are all really, really helpful. So again, if you're in this phase of your cycle or you're menopause or pregnant or something and you're like, I'm really having a hard time, you might need to pull out all the stops like every night to really get a handle on this versus being here, you might be like, oh, pff, I just do my little breathing thing for five minutes and I'm good to go. Yes, your, <laughs> your body's gonna respond differently. 
So I'm, I'm throwing out kind of some of these other suggestions, you know, that a lot of people do. Um, the, the screens, the lights, the, you know, use all, think about all your senses, right? Sound, music, soft music, or very, very quiet, right? Um, if you have kids, it can be really tough for it to be really quiet. I get that. <laughs> Which is where the soft music comes in. Um, or, you know, stories, things like that, lovely stories. Um, they have apps for that as well. Sight, having it be dim, smell, calming essential oils, lavender is very calming, something that just makes you feel really good. Um, I don't want to say taste, but <laughs> there's that. And then touch. Again, you want to feel warm. You want to feel relaxed. You want to be very comfortable. That's going to help your system wind down from all the stressors you were there, you know, experiencing during the day. Um, some things to look at for supplements. Melatonin is a popular one. Oftentimes when you're having hormonal issues, it may feel like it doesn't work as well. That's very normal. So it's not that it doesn't work, it's just your system might need a combo of these supplements to help. So again, make sure when you're, when I throw these things out there, this is a suggestion for you to try, you know, take it according to a label or, you know, work with somebody that can help you implement these things for the right things for you. But other things to look at are taking this combo. I've had great success with a lot of women with a combination of melatonin, valerian, L-theanine, even chamomile. Yeah. Um, yes. And yes, to need a taste teas or tart cherries are good for sleep. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Those are really good for sleep. Um, tart cherry juice, really great to help your system sleep because it helps your body release more melatonin naturally. Great, great comment. Yeah. So calming teas. My kids actually really like bedtime tea. It's just a simple little tea when they're all kind of wound up, right? Anybody else have kids that just kind of run around sometimes at night, just get all wild and like, it's like, it's time for bed now. Oh, we're going to start running around the house. What? No. <laughs> just, they do, right? They do. So get, get them some bedtime tea, some good night tea. You know, that stuff's great too. So these are just some of the suggestions again. But then nutritionally, a lot of times people will say, oh, I don't like to eat before bed. Or if I, I, I don't want to eat before bed because I'm afraid I'm going to gain weight. Or if you eat before bed, your body doesn't digest it. So going to make you fat, that type of thing. Actually eating protein before bed not only helps you build and maintain more lean muscle, but it can actually help you sleep better too. It helps your body get into a deeper sleep and maintain that sleep longer throughout the night because your body's breaking down protein. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's one of my little secrets for women with sleep. Um, again, these are just a few of the things that's going to help you improve sleep, but I, I listed off a bunch of them for you, but just recognize that it's not always going to be the same, that your magic formula might work here and then you're going to have to change it for here. That's normal. It might work, you know, and you might find something for when you have your cycle, but you go through menopause, totally changes. And pregnancy, oh my gosh, yes, it changes for pregnancy too. And you might have to change it throughout your pregnancy to keep up with where your system is at, you know, and then of course after baby comes, you just, you know, you don't sleep much <laughs> or it's very interrupted sleep. So <laughs> unless you just have a baby, that's a good sleeper. You know, my first one was a good sleeper. So I have three kids. Um, my first, he was a decent sleeper right off the bat, you know, would give me, you know, three hours at a time, four hours at a time, that type of thing. My second though, she was born. And let me know if you guys know what I'm talking about with this. If you've had ones like this, she was on a reverse sleep cycle. For those of you that don't know what that means, a reverse sleep cycle means she would want to sleep during the day, like sleep for hours, four hour stretches during the day, five hour stretches during the day. And then want to be awake all night. Would want stimulation at night. She would want to play at night. And I'd be like, no baby, no. My second one, right? I had a two year old and a newborn and she wanted to be up all night playing. So I had to reverse that sleep cycle real quick. That did not, <laughs> that first two, three weeks of her life, that was literally, um, when I, when we got home from the hospital, when I realized, like after a few days when I was like, this is, this is a bad, she's on a reverse sleep schedule. That was what I spent the next three weeks doing. I was like, we are reversing this. This is what I'm dedicating my life to right now. Baby needs to sleep at night. <laughs> so, so 
it, it makes a big difference though when you can sleep more oh it makes a huge difference in your health and your recovery how your hormones are balanced all these other things everything is always tied together though i mean that's my mission and goal to really give women these resources i talk about sleep as well as talking about metabolism and talking about hormones because sleep is a huge part of it um you know i have other resources for you as well resources uh the female fat solution is on amazon my book the female fat solution the female menopause solution also on amazon as a great resource for you my podcast, The Female Health Solution, um, and then my YouTube channel, Dr. Beth Westy, where you can always search for any archived videos on something specific. So if you're looking for fertility or fibroids or something, right, it's gonna be on there. But my mission is just to give women a ton of great content and information so that you can not only feel better, fuel better, but also know, oh my gosh, yes, my sleep is a big thing that could be holding me back from getting the best results for me. So. That's what I got for you guys right now. Please let me know if you have any questions. Thank you for tuning in. And of course, if you found this helpful, share this information with somebody that you know could use it because they're just not taking their sleep into account for their hormones and their cycle. Yay. All right.